Okay, so next we'll have a look at the Chrome extension pop-up itself. If we click on that, we'll be able to search the base that we've just populated. So I'm not putting in any search keywords at the moment, just hitting search and it's bringing back all the results. Scroll down, have a quick look at those. So that's fine, that's coming back with everything. Obviously where we don't have a preview, it's just that we've not yet uploaded a, uh, a cover or an interior. It's fairly uh, basic at the moment and we'll get fleshed out over the uh, coming weeks and months as we work on this. So you've got your search box at the top here and that will obviously work um, as it does in Merch Wizard. So if I type in football, we'll only get the football ones back. Flamingo, we'll get all the flamingo ones back and then you just clear filter to bring back all the results right and then from there we can go on to selecting a record and you get this uh, navigation uh, view here which we call the details view and that's going to have all the text information uh, that you've scraped and it doesn't have all the fields in there so all the fields are in our table but some of the key ones are in there along with and uh, this is something that isn't in your air table base and that's uh, what we would call your kind of live products or sub product links so it's got each marketplace and for that particular marketplace it's going to show you the price that you've got set uh, on there at the moment and the currency that's in and a link to that particular product so you can see that product live on the different amazons all around the world which is pretty cool uh, we're going to be expanding this out to show bsr and reviews and things like that in the future and the reason this information isn't stored in your base is that there's currently eight marketplaces. So for each of those marketplaces, we're going to have to store a record to store all this. And that's soon going to clog up your Airtable base and going to push you over the limits pretty quickly. So we store this separately in the app storage, basically. So let's have a look at that product on the different Amazons. So there it is in Germany, Spain and France. Awesome, let's go back to our pop-up. So that's that bit, and if we then have a look what else we've got, you can then edit the product directly from here. It's going to pop up in the details page. Click on that, there's our Flamingo 2019 planner. And back again, this will open up the record in Airtable. And you'll be able to edit it directly within that if you wanted to. And the other things that you can do, you can download the cover directly from here, or you can download the interior directly using these buttons. You can then navigate between the different listings just by clicking these buttons. I'll go to the end and click in that button. Um, where it's a draft listing, it's not going to show a, a thumbnail in there, but where you've got a cover and an interior, it's going to show that. If you don't have the cover and interior, it's just going to hide that. The other thing that we've got is the ability to copy this text to clipboard. So you can just click on that and it will copy it to your clipboard. So if I just copy that, paste it, we'll see it's in there. So you can copy any of these fields as you hover over them. It says it's copying it and it's copied. Okay, so let's have a look at what it looks like when we're using KDP Wizard to create a new listing. So I'll close that one down and we're going to just say I want to create a new paperback. Okay, so there are two options when creating a new product that you can use KDP Wizards functionality to help you out. Option one is to go to the pop-up itself. Uh, once you've found a record in here, uh, the record that you want to copy, uh, when you select it in here, it's going to populate the title subtitle and all the other information that's on here uh, on your actual listing itself so uh, it will populate the author and other things below but we won't go down and do that just yet and i'll show you option two i'll just refresh the page so we'll start afresh so option two is to create your book manually and fill in the details as appropriate but uh, to use these new controls that we've got here as part of kdp wizard so this is a lookup based on the previous offers that you've got in your current portfolio. So there's these four offers that are available in our Airtable base. So I can select, say this is a Hello Prosecco uh, offered publication, or you can change this as you see fit. 
So that's pretty cool. And then you can do the same with contributors. So we've got these contributors in our base and we can then go ahead and say, right, I want to add in the photographer and I'm going to say the preface was by Mr. Preface. Uh, and away you go. And the same thing applies to keyword sets. So you say, right, here's all the keywords that I've used before, but We've got this handy search functionality and if you said this was a football book i can search for football and get my football soccer footy um keywords in there that that we've used before and um, we can type in gift present anything like that that we want and reuse those keywords uh, quickly and easily the next one is a big one which is the categories lookup so the categories lookup in kdp is a little bit clunky and it's about 4,000 of these categories and it's difficult to navigate and there's no search. So KDP wizard to the rescue, we have added this drop down here and it's quite big, quite long, but the great news is that you can finally search in categories. So if we were gonna say this is a soccer book, I'm gonna type in soccer and then you can choose the different options in there. And Select that one. Also go for football as we call it in the UK. There we go, there's our two categories. Uh, it is a bit of a whopper so it does take a, a second or so for it to, to render and to reflect the changes but it all does work uh, and it, it saves the categories correctly. And at the moment, these two don't really play that well together. So if I went to choose categories now, it wouldn't work. And similarly, if you chose categories and then went in here, it wouldn't work. But something will work on. Uh, but in the meantime, I just use either that one or uh, the built-in KDP one. Okay, so if we go on to the content page next. So you've got all your usual stuff here about getting a free KDP ISBN and your print options and things like that. I'll just show you the interesting bits that we've added um, with KDP Wizard. So you now get the manuscript or interiors drop down and the covers drop down here as well. So where we've put in our interiors in our base, we've got these four in here, but only three of them actually have attachment files. So we should get three interiors in here. Yep. And Right, what we'll just do then is basically you can select one of these and then you can download the interior. So there's the PDF that's come in from our Airtable base. Or if you're on a PC, I'm sorry Mac users, but it only works. Or if you're on a PC, then you can use this copy interior URL. And that's going to copy the full attachment URL directly from the Airtable base. So if I click the upload button, I can now paste in the URL, which is the URL of the PDF directly from Airtable. I don't need to download the interior PDF file and re-upload it. I can just copy the uh, URL and paste it in that way, which is pretty cool. Uh, same applies for the covers. So the covers are the ones that have got the attachments field populated. And again, you can download the covers copy the cover URL and upload them back into here as you see fit. Okay, we'll uh, skip onto the pricing page and show you what you can do on there as well. Okay, so the pricing page, uh, the only additional thing that we have in here uh, is the prices drop down. So if we open up the all the marketplaces, what you can do is in your Airtable base, um, we have the concepts of the uh, kind of set of prices for particular type of book or a particular size and length of book and you can just enter these in here and change them as you see fit and then you can use them on the prices page to kind of pre-populate your preset prices so if we said this is a six times nine book it's going to populate it from there uh, we could say it's one of those you get the idea it's going to populate the prices in the appropriate marketplaces with the uh, the details that we've put in here. So these aren't the prices that have been pushed up because we figure there's just going to be so many of those and there's going to just be hundreds of these. So uh, it's just something that you can use to quickly set your pricing um, across uh, and make it, make it consistent across your different products, basically. 
Okay, so let's have a look at the settings that we've got available to us in KDP Wizard. So there's not many at the moment, but if you go on this settings cog, um, you'll see the license key which you'll need to have entered, uh, your Airtable account API key and base keys. Uh, you can change them in here as you can set active bases and remove old ones and things like that. So all that is fine. And then we don't have many options, as I say, but we do have a few here that will need a little explanation. So a hide KDP menu is uh, basically the, uh, you know, in my opinion, I would say that the notifications here take up too much of the screen and you hardly see any books, especially when we add in our little KDP wizard dash at the top. So what we're doing is adding, if you tip that and hit save, what it will do is refresh that page but it gets rid of those notifications and the only thing that I would say would be um, useful uh, apart from obviously once you've read all the other useful stuff uh, the only thing that would be um, that you'd use regularly would be the creation of new products so this you can achieve that here just create one new paperback or one new ebook or you want to create ten of those um, that's what you can do there the other options are to use a sticky header on the bookshelf page. So if we do that and scroll down, our header stays up there. So we can go and click push listings to, to our table and then go on to the next page without losing our header there. What else have we got? We have got disable category search functionality and that does exactly what it says on the tin. It disables our search functionality and just leaves you with the KDP tree view. So if you prefer to use the original one, just tip that and ours will disappear. And yeah, then the other one is just a default for the number of create tabs that you want to, to have in here. So that's it for the KDP wizard beta walkthrough. Stay tuned for more updates and we'll be releasing some videos showing the new features as we progress through the beta and eventually into the full release. Okay, cheers for now.